we are talking all things Ultimate Fighter today, how fitting is it that right now, joining us on the Fox Sports Hotline, we have the Ultimate Fighter Season 15 winner, Michael Maverick Chiesa, on the line. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. How's everybody doing? I'm great, thanks. How about yourself? Doing real good. Now, you know, you, like we said, were the Ultimate Fighter Season 15 winner. You went through that live season. The longest one ever. (laughs) Yeah. And, I mean, you obviously had your share of hardship during that season, but you went through all the personal strife that you did. You came out on top, and now you're really making a name for yourself in the UFC. Uh, What's it like for you to have this fight ahead of you with a guy like Francisco Trinaldo, who's also kind of coming up through the ranks in the UFC? Um, you know, this will be my first Brazilian, and uh, fortunately, I'm not fighting in in, in Brazil. So, uh, not that I would shy away from a challenge like that, but it would be nice to have uh, somewhat of a home field advantage this fight. The crazy thing is, is the, you know, I went to the Memorial Day card when JDS fought Frank Mir uh, back in 2012, and the you'd be surprised about how many Brazilians make the trip, you know, up here. North America to watch these these fights on the big weekends, so I, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm still, still going to hear the chance once we get to going in the cage and stuff. But uh, it's going to be nice to have home field advantage for this fight. Uh, I know Francisco; he's a fellow tough vet, uh, you know, very respectable opponent. You know what I mean? He's a big guy, uh, big puncher, good power. Uh, you know, he can fight all three rounds. So uh, you know, I'm going to be geared up to do the same, but I'm going to be gunning for the finish, just like always. And just to clear up for anybody out there that was a little confused about Michael, what was what he was talking about is when he's talking about his first Brazilian, it is not a wax. It is his first Brazilian fighter that he's got to take on. And the second thing is, is you are absolutely right about the home field. Uh, you know, you, you are fighting him on your home field, but it's kind of split when it comes down to it because so many Brazilians do make the trip for the fights here in Vegas. Sometimes... You don't even know where you are. You think you may be in Brazil. Oh, I went to um, I went to the the Sun and Silver rematch um, for the fight week in 2012, and man, I felt like I was in Brazil. It was absolutely unreal. I was like, you know, these guys really make the trip, or else they're just kind of scattered out all over the country, and you don't know it. But yeah, I mean, they really stand behind their fighters, and I, you know, I love it. It's passion is what it is. I mean, when people some people will kind of get to bad mouth and I'm like, man, they're just passionate people. That's what, uh, you know, they get behind their fighters, they get behind their athletes. And, uh, you know, yeah, it, it sucks to be on the other side of things when you're getting the, you're going to die chant yelled, you know, against you. But, uh, you know, you got to respect the passion that they have for their people. And one of your teammates, uh, Sam Cecilia, who trains with you over at Sick Jitsu, he's been on the other side. I mean, have you learned a lot from his experiences being down in Brazil and taking on Brazilian fighters and what he's faced? Yeah, you know, it's crazy. When we were down there last time for his fight against Alfredo Pepe, uh, it's like it didn't even phase him. I mean, Sam's almost like a, a Brazilian native himself now. I mean, he <laughs> fought, in, fought in Rio when he fought Roni Jason. And then this next time around, he went down to um, went down to Brazil early to Curitiba and trained at CM Systems with Cristiano Marcelo. Uh, on that note, God bless Cristiano, oh, yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. you know I hope he has a good retirement. Uh, you know he's a legend. But I, I was yeah, shocked so, the other day when like I heard a Brazilian that. Brazilian native. I mean, he's been there so many times. He's fought there twice. It just doesn't even phase him anymore. Yeah, I was actually shocked about hearing about Cristiano Marcelo retiring the other day. I, I did not see it coming. You know, especially after being on the Ultimate Fighter, you you know, saw a resurgence in his career. Did not expect that to happen. But, you know, like you say, God bless him and, and uh, best of luck in his retirement. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's a legend. He's fought in all the major promotions. Um, you know, he's got a great school. You know, I respect his decision. Um, you know, it just sucks. It, you know, I, I always enjoy watching Cristiano fight. He's a, he's, a, he's a crazy dude. He'll get out there and he'll get out there and scrap with anybody. Um But, you know, I hope he has a good retirement. He deserves it. And, you know, just to follow up on what we were talking about with Sam Cecilia and Sik Jitsu, you guys are actually fighting on the UFC 173 card together. And I don't think that's happened for you two since the Ultimate Fighter finale. How exciting is it for you to be on the same card with, you know, not just your friend, but your teammate? It's 
it's really exciting. Uh, Sam and I have been training together for six years. Um, you know, and, and this is, like we said, it's like a throwback. Like, we're, yeah. we're so used to fighting on the same card. Like, even when we were amateurs fighting in freaking hay barns, you know, it's like we're used to making the trip to the fight, warming each other up, getting out and fighting, and, you know, knock on wood. I'm not here to jinx anything, but we've never lost. We both fought the same night. I mean, tough finale. Sam knocked his guy out, and, and I got a, you know, submission finish. So, uh, hopefully we're going to, we're going to keep the magic alive. And, and it's a good thing when we both fight the same night, it's good energy. It's, it's good to have us both in the same position at the same time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a good night for both of us. And just to follow up with some more of your teammates, I know, uh, Juliana Pena, of course, suffered an unfortunate injury and, uh, you know, your campus since come out and said, Hey, that wasn't, you know, what it was made up to be as far as the bullying and everything. But I would like to know what's her status like. I, I saw on your Twitter that you guys have been hanging out with Sam also and Juliana. I'm just wondering if you could, you know, maybe update us on where her rehab is at. Uh, you know, she's doing good. She uh, She's off her crutches. She's walking around. She's doing real well. Um, it's just one of those things that where she just needs to be patient and uh, just let let the body heal. And, and, and she's doing that. And it's funny when you see her. Uh, well, it's not funny, but... Um, you know, she's so she's such a driven individual that it's like when she's sitting watching us train and watching us spar, she'll be sitting in her chair and she'll have like ten pounds weight in each hand. She'll be like curling, doing a bunch of stuff. Just like she's such an active, determined person. Like I really, I mean, I'm not just saying this because she's my teammate. I'm saying this because I've seen the things she's done in the gym. We've all seen what she can do in her fights. She's fought some some very tough girls. Uh, she's gonna come back with a vengeance. I mean, it's gonna be. You know, she, she's ranked number 10 now, and I guarantee you after her next performance, we're going to be calling for her to shoot right up into the top three. I mean, she's that good. She'll she's have to raw, change her name talented, from a Venezuelan young. vixen to Venezuelan vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Venezuelan vengeance oh, we lost is you definitely right? going to come out. You know, And and another thing, too, is, um, you know, they doctors always give you the worst-case scenario. They're always going to tell you, like, oh, you're going to be out for, like, two years or whatever. But, I, you know... I think she's going to be back sooner than that. I know that she's doing the right thing. She's doing her rehab. She's, you know, she's playing by the rules. And, you know, she's just going to come back with, like we said, the Venezuelan vengeance. It's, it's, it's bound to happen. And, and you know, all the hype she has, um, it's well-deserved. So I know that she's going to be back better than ever. And, you know, everything happens for a reason. It's, it's unfortunate. It's You never want to see anything like this happen to anybody in, in the sport or just in general. But, um Unfortunately, it happened to her, but, you know, she's going to battle her way through and it's going to make her a tougher individual, which is scary to think, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because when you watch The Ultimate Fighter and, and the season that she won, it was, you know, right from the start. Her first fight, I believe, was Shayna Baszler, and it was just like, oh, God, this poor girl doesn't stand a chance. And then next thing you know, she's just rolling through people and then, you know, obviously wins the finale. We wish her the best of luck and a speedy recovery. Uh, I agree. You never want to see that happen to anybody. But uh, back to you, Michael. You've got a fight with Francisco Trinaldo. Um, what have you seen uh, from Francisco that makes this an interesting matchup in your head for you? Uh, for me, um, the fact that he's a southpaw is very interesting. Um, you know, I haven't fought a southpaw for a long time. You know, he's got that. He's got a big punch, big overhand left, big uppercut, um, good kicks. So it's just that's the most interesting thing for me is is the fact that he's a southpaw and it's uh, you know it's a little bit trickier. It changes training. Um, you know, this fight I will, uh, I'll be splitting my time between training here and training in Las Vegas. Um, I'll be down at Syndicate with John Wood. Uh, he's got there's a lot of southpaws in the gym, so that's kind of why I'll be making a, I'll be making a trip from Spokane to Vegas. Just, you know, John's a great coach. He he has a good program, and uh, like I said, there's just so many southpaws down there. I mean, there's there's almost too many, so it's like it's perfect fit for me, and it's perfect. I'll be fighting in Vegas, so I'll get a chance to you know go down early, get acclimated to the to the temperature, and you know I, I fought in Vegas. I lived there for three months. Everybody knows that, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it'll be nice to go down the early, settle in, get some good rounds in with some south paws. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's just going to be a tough fight. You know, I feel like, it, like what I was saying earlier about Brazilians being passionate, they're passionate fighters. I mean, they just, they have this never say die mentality. You know, they just go out on their fields and, uh, you know, I, I just, I predict a very tough fight. 
but I, you know, I don't see me being overpowered in any department. And I, I say that as respectfully as possible. I mean, I know Francisco's world class. He's a great fighter. He's done phenomenal things in the cage, but I just know that that night's going to be my night. Yeah. Now, have you watched any tape on Francisco? Oh yeah, yeah. I I say especially when it comes to my division, I, I'm very. I'm very up to date with everybody's fights. I mean, I'm, I'm always watching if there's, I actually have a notebook and anytime there's a fight in my division, I write it down. And so that, you know, I write it down as, as the year, you know, as time goes on, as these cards get put together, I'm always writing down the fights in the lightweight division. So I make sure to watch them if they're on fight pass or Fox sports main card, whatever it is. I'm always writing down the fights at lightweight so I can make sure to watch them. And I watch them. I don't, I don't watch them as a fan. I watch them like I'm a mad scientist, and I'm trying to figure out some formula for each guy. So, you know, when you were watching the last fight card, I read on Twitter that you were in a Starbucks all undercover sitting there with the Wi-Fi connected. Do you bring in, like, your notebooks and hang out there, have your coffee? Or, you know, next time maybe you should put a video cam on or something, like give the fans a, a instant reaction of, like, a big country knockout or something. <laughs> oh, it was so awkward. It was bad. I live... uh I live right by Gonzaga University, which, okay. you know, it's a, it's a it's a good school. And, you know, and it, it's something normal for me. I'll just grab my, you know, I'll grab my, my tablet or my laptop and I'll head down to Starbucks or somewhere and just kind of hang out and, you know, watch fights or catch up on stuff and go home and finish it. But the fights were so freaking good in Abu Dhabi that I couldn't get away from my laptop. I was like, every single fight was like super good or something really weird was happening, you know, with the headbutt and, yeah. and all these weird things going on, and I couldn't get away from my laptop. I ended up getting sucked into staying at Starbucks forever. Oh. But, I mean, it was the it was the ramsey Nijum fight where I freaking flew out of my seat. You know, and I got my headphones in, and I am kind of got myself tucked in the corner, and, and I'm watching the fight, and, you know, uh, that Benil guy gets the punches off on Ramsey, and all of a sudden, whack, when Ramsey dropped that guy, I, like, jumped up with my laptop in my hands and, like, it was like that awkward moment in the movie where there's like music and everybody's doing stuff and it's like Burr, and you stop and everyone's looking at me. I was like, oh, awesome. yeah, that that's <laughs> awesome. That is, but I'm surprised that there was a Starbucks in Washington. I'm really? a little, I'm blown away by this. <laughs> yeah, what a what a shocker. <laughs> Uh, and for anybody out there who's just tuning in, we are on the phone with Michael Chiesa, who has a fight at UFC 173 against Francisco Trinaldo coming up here in Las Vegas. And we do just have a couple more minutes, Mike. So I just wanted to ask just a couple of questions to get to know the person that you are, okay? Not so much the fight game, the person that you are. After a long day of training, after a long day of really just beating yourself up, when you get home, what do you like to do? You watch TV, you read a book, you sit in the internet. What's your ideal relaxation time? Uh, for me, it's just, just coming home and relaxing. You know, I usually I eat like a rabbit all day, so that when I when I get home from a from a hard day's work, you know, my favorite thing to do is just have a good meal ready. I just like to sit down. Usually, you know, I'm not a big TV guy. You know, I, it's like I, I bought this big nice TV when I got home from the show, and it's like I don't really use it. <laughs> But I, I like to just come home and listen to music and just kind of surf the web and read articles. And, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a, I've always got my head in other places looking at look, looking at different things outside the fight game. You know, like I like doing a lot of outdoor stuff. So I'm always looking up, you know, what trips am I going to make this summer? You know, I'm, a, I'm very active. Like when the sun's out, I'm out. So that's what I'm always thinking is what am I going to do after my fight? That's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm, I'm planning a few little vacations for after this fight and, and doing some research and stuff. And, you know, I, aside from, aside from that, I mean, pretty simple guy, pretty simple laid back dude. I, I enjoy the mountains in the winter. I like to snowboard in the summer. You know, I like to go hiking a lot. I like to play a lot of beach volleyball and stuff like that. Play basketball, you know, just, not really a TV guy, just music, music and a couple good articles, and I'm pretty I'm pretty settled in with that. My my personal question for you is, when did the rat tail become a thing, and how <laughs> long will it stay on your head? Well, you know, my hair started getting really long again, and uh, I would have cut, I would have, true story, when I was on the show, I like after my, after my first fight with, Jeremy Larson, I wanted to shave my beard and cut my hair. I was like, all right, I've never really done the beard. This was like the first time I grew one. 
you know, and I, I got tired of having my hair all over my face when I was training, when I was fighting and all that stuff. So I told the producers, like, hey, will you order me a razor? I want, you know, and I need a haircut. They're like, uh, you can't do that. I'm like, well, why? And they're like, well, because, you know, we, we can't have you cut your hair and save your beard because then we can't go back and use old footage. It'll just look off. I'm like, so I have to keep this for the next, you know, two months. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> So I, once I got out of the house, and everyone was saying, oh, long hair, don't care, and, you know, fear the beard, and everybody was loving it, and I'm like, all right, you know, I'm going to kind of have to stick with this then, and, you know, I've grown fond of the beard, but, um, you know, fighting with long hair, I just, I, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't like having hair in my face, when I'm getting punched, I'm looking like I don't know what's going on, and so to keep the spirit of the long hair, don't care alive, I just decided I'm going to cut a rat tail, and I never had one. Like, I was a mullet child. I've, I've had a mullet for probably half of my life. Like, Mike Pyle status. I've right. always had a mullet. It's just always been there. And uh, I even had one for the Mazadol fight. And uh, I decided this time, new little flavor, getting a rat tail. And I, it, I got like a, you know, I got some good fights on this long hair. So I was like, you know, I don't want to cut it all off. Maybe there's some luck in there. I'm a little bit superstitious. So I was like, I'm just going to leave the tail. Maybe I'll braid it for the fight or something. Maybe not, but hopefully it starts a new little trend. Beard with a rat tail. Yeah, <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't go fixing it, you know? <laughs> well, you know, Michael, we are all out of time uh, for the interview today, but we really, really did appreciate your time, and uh, thank you so much again for joining us. And, guys, Michael Chiesa will be fighting Francisco Trinaldo at UFC 173. That goes down at the MGM Grand Garden Arena May 24th here in Las Vegas. You can get tickets right now on Ticketmaster.com. They have gone on sale. So, again, Michael, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.